another week crushed beneath feet, stamped down into the floor like it's supposed to be. We have kicked some goddamn ass this week, my friends. Yes, we have. We have demolished. Not only did we crush a chess champion at Magic the Gathering, 2-0, clean sweep, chalk it up. But we also put many of our wonderful viewers, gave our Pokemon their names, and banished them to the digital void, never to be seen again. Just as they deserve for their righteous heresy that they have committed over the last 12 months. For all their torment of me, they're laughing, they're joking, they're pointing when I fall. My revenge is now set upon them, and they shall suffer for as long as I deem it necessary. They shall spend digital eternity laboring for their crimes, and I couldn't be happier about it. But next week, extremes in FF begin. Endwalker approaches, the time is nigh, and we have so much to finish up. Alliance raids completed, but our extremes wait for us on Monday. Those extremes shall begin. Oh, yes. Extreme Bismarck will fall at my feet. Oh, that fight's going to be really hard, and I'm going to be really angry about it. It's going to be, it's going to be an absolute nightmare. It's going to be something like that, but we'll figure it out when we get there. It'll be absolutely fine. And not only that, we've actually begun ordering our decorations for our brand new office. We should take our keys in the next few days, in which case I'll get a nice quality office tour for you so you can see exactly what awaits us the uh it should be a lot of fun it should be a lot of fun we had a huge deal with display where we got like basically half price and all our audience got to choose all of the wonderful designs that will be up on the walls and all that kinds of stuff it should be good <laughs> a lot of people are saying hair's looking on point and thank you thank you a good another six to seven months for we get the fully the full array i do forget how bald i was occasionally i look back at yonder videos from past and realize how bad it was so overall i'm very happy with how it's turned out even if it stopped now i'd be a pretty happy bunny i'd be a pretty happy bunny but it has not stopped there is more growth to be had more growth to be had <clears throat> When are we thinking of moving to the office? Probably just after Christmas. Uh, we've got to paint, you know, get it all set up. I've got to furnish the damn place. I've got to get couches, desks. We're sorting, P Nups is sorting out PCs because they'll be handy. <laughs> they'll be handy. Uh, I, don't, I don't exactly want to have a PC not in my home. That would suck. Uh, I don't want that. So Nups is currently scrambling. So it's uh, to get as much stuff as we can. We've got chairs to get, all that kind of stuff. Can chat pick the paint? I'm actually going because the green screen is leaving us. The green screen is leaving us. I'm not sure how we're going to do drama time in the new office, but the green screen is leaving us. Uh, I prefer to have an actual background uh, with actual stuff. So we might just build an inn. We can do that now. <laughs> we can do that. We can actually build ourselves an inn where we could maybe have drama time in a real inn. Uh, and do that kind of stuff. It should be a lot of fun. Yes, an actual tavern. We could actually build something like that. Use the courtroom in Final Fantasy. We did think about that. Uh, for those of you who have been keeping up to date with things, uh, the company did build an entire courtroom and actually put me on trial for the crime of padding DPS. Um, which I was found not guilty. Thank you. Thank you very much. I was found not guilty. Uh, wouldn't really work for drama, though, because we'd have to get the people in in order to plead their case so to speak uh for me to draw judgment on it um uh, but what we might do so pay attention next week i know as i saw it today while we were streaming is my team has come up with an idea that they want to use the courtroom for in order to give away some stuff perhaps for endwalker uh so for those of you who are interested in getting early access and things like that we might have something in the cards for you uh in terms of courtroom so we can give away some endwalker stuff hmm very exciting stuff we give so much stuff away this week it's actually been insane we've give away countless warframe stuff uh what else did we give away we gave away copies of the new pokemon game all sorts of shit uh, special thanks to nups <laughs> special thanks to nups who sorts all this stuff out for us uh in his quest to furnish us with enough money to pay everybody and make sure things go forward he's a good man He's a good man. But that's not why you're here today. Let's have some fun. Let's finish out this week. And as always, yeah, some people are asking, are we taking stories from Final Fantasy? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, any game. We don't really care. People are wacky regardless of the game. Doesn't matter. People are wacky, crazy, idiots. And as always, Drama Time is a celebration of the players. It is a celebration of the players. Uh, so the game is not that relevant, really. 
Uh, it's just that these are where a lot of drama takes place. So we're going to kick off with an FF story to get us started and warmed up today. Uh, mainly because it's about Lala's being uh, not created equal. I assume this might be about crazy Lala's. <laughs> crazy, crazy Lala's. And we've got some WoW stuff coming up as well. So, let's have a look here. Um, we need two names. Furwin and Monkey Man. Furwin and Monkey Man. Our wonderful website supporters. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Alright, let's get started here and have some fun. <clears throat> I hope you've all had a great week before we get started. We've had a great week. I hope you guys have had a great week. Thank you very much, Dada. Thank you very much. Enjoy your new gavels to all those. You can't see it in the chat, but thank enjoy your new gavels, all you wonderful guys. Hello, Preacher, Bex, and your chat. I have a ride of a story for you. I just started watching Drama Time. It's great entertainment while I work. No questions or judgments, but feel free to have your chat, the jury, if you will, count the red flags that pop up along this tale. I picked up Final Fantasy XIV again in a time we look back so fondly. Spring of 2020. COVID running rampant and I was bored to death. I was lonely and I was starting to go a little stir crazy. I had played some of the free trial before Shadowbringers was released, but stopped playing when life got in the way. During quarantine, a couple of friends started playing FF again and I decided, sure, why not? They had been playing off and on for years, had already completed most of the story, and I was picking up in the middle of a Realm Reborn. I was, of course, what is known as a Sprout experiencing it all anew one of my friends was a lalafell like many sprouts they weirded me i should explain this to our wow viewers new players in ff literally have a symbol next to their name indicating it is a new player and it's the symbol of a sprout so new players are called sprouts i did not notice this i have a sprout next to my name uh, i did not notice until the chat pointed out to me he's like you literally have a sprout next to your character's name so <laughs> that's why the sprout name is there like many Sprouts, Lalafells weirded me out at first. Then I came to love them. He had a group of Lalafells he always hung out with. And we were all very friendly together. Then I made the forbidden deal. I said if they could help me get to level 75 through random dungeons, that night, I would change my character into a Lalafell. Hands were shaken and a deal was struck. I got to 75. I became a Lalafell. And now I understand why they do it. I could never go back. I was having fun running around as a two foot tall menace. Going through the story, wiping in Orem Vale many times as a brand new healer, then a new tank. My friend started logging on less and less over time. And I was trying my best to stand on my own two feet to befriend this group of Lalafells on my own. I soon found out one of the members of the group, Monkey Man, had been excommunicated. What happened? I asked. I was told that there was just a bunch of drama and I, you don't want to get involved. You don't want to get involved. At the same time, the ringleader of this la little Lalafell gang, Furwin, was getting married in game. And I was bestowed with an invite. When the day of the wedding came, there was a Discord server set up specifically for it. Everyone was in voice comms. The wedding was getting streamed. It was a whole big deal. I went in, said hi, and the entire Discord went quiet. The first thing I heard was, You're a real girl? <laughs> of course. <laughs> I said, No. I'm a woman. <laughs> no, dickhead. I'm a woman. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Despite being a female Lalafell in game, because of my in-game name and how much I memed, everyone assumed I was a guy. Joining in with the Bants. At that point, I was still naive to the ways. I knew most cat girls and dragon girls, etc. were guys behind the screen, but the Lalas? No way. Why would a guy, a big, strong, lumberjack-style guy, play a two-foot-tall girl when they could be a busty, chesty, bunny girl? Oh, Mike, how I was so very, very wrong. Berwin was a woman. 
And in this Lalafell group, there was at least one or two other women. Now, I don't know where this story's going, but according to the rules of roleplay that I have discovered in Final Fantasy, a lot of women play Lalafells because they're off-limits RP-wise to ERP with. As a community rule, I don't know if it's a rule enforced by Squeenix, but generally speaking, it is taboo to try and ERP with Lalafells. Because they look like children. So it's not allowed. And a lot of places ban people who try and do that. There is to be no sexual activity or ERPing with Lalafells in game. That was one of the rules I was taught at the nightclub. It was a very strict rule. There'll be no ERP involving Lalafells. Uh, yeah, Squeenix don't enforce anything. But it seems the community does have that. That's not going to happen. If you want to ERP, make a bunny girl, make a dragon girl. There's lots of other choices. But the Lalafells are off limits. We're not playing around with that. There must have been at least one or two other women there. But out of the 20 to 30 people in that call, everyone else was a guy, including the group of Lalafells. While this should have been a warning sign, I was excited just to talk to these people that I'd been playing with for literally months. To no one's surprise except mine, I was quickly invited to their group's official Discord server after that, and many of the Lalafells were more than happy to run dungeons with me once they found out <laughs> that I was a woman. Shocker. What they didn't know is I was still talking to Monkey Man. And their story was very different from the one that the group told. In short, they were getting very odd and explicit messages from some members of the group. When they tried to seek advice on what to do, the whole scenario got turned against them. They were taunted, kicked out of the squad. Now wherever they go, Furwin and some others will follow them, stand around Monkey Man and whisper the wildest rumors to anyone nearby. Monkey Man said to watch out for Furwin. Because w other women threaten her. And when Furwin feels threatened, she goes a little wild. She's also someone who talks behind people's backs. No matter how close you are and uses it to manipulate other people. What I didn't know at the time was that Furwin was actually infamous. She was known across the entire realm for causing trouble. But of course, I didn't find out this till later, and hindsight, as we all know, is twenty twenty. I took all of this information with a grain of salt. I'm hearing stories from both sides about each person. How do we know the truth? I thought it would be fine to be friends with the group and Monkey Man. I'm not trying to get in the middle of anything, but both seem fine to me. Newly joining the Discord server, I was asked to join voice. Sure, of course. Except all the voice channels were empty. Apparently, there was a secret voice channel. And they had to drag me into it. And only select people could see it even existed. Why would a Discord server, with all friends, have a hidden voice channel? What was also strange is, everyone in this call was on camera. They all had their webcams going. They were having drinks, laughing together. It was like a little party. It was a good time. There were some odd questions that I was asked by Furwin, though. What's your real life name? Where do you live? Where do you work? No, 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 no. Not what do you do. Where do you work? Who do you work for? Of course, I only answered these questions vaguely. But it was strange to be asked such things. Why did they care? I was given a role by Furwin in Discord too, and it opened up so many more text channels that were all completely hidden to me. But then it was taken away a few hours later. Weird. Maybe I'm overthinking this. Maybe they thought I'd been promoted or something in the guild. I don't know. I was excited that I was making new friendships, like we all are in MMOs. Thinking that the group had finally accepted me and they now had people that I could talk to freely and join groups with, all kinds of wonderful things. It had been a few days and I was wandering around some Stormblood areas with a friend when someone from the Lalafell group wanted to join in. He joined our party as we wandered around. But that's when the weird messages started again. Started making comments about my hair. Started normal enough, I guess. I like the colour. I like how long it is. How much he wanted to strangle himself with it. 
how much you'd like to shave it all off. I won't go into more detail. But the weird thing is, the comments from this little Lalafell, the person behind the the person behind the shorty were never in voice. He never saw me on camera. And he now I now realize he was talking about my IRL hair. How did he know all this stuff about my real life image? All my surroundings. Rightfully freaked out, I just logged off for a bit. Creep zone. Don't like. I went quiet for a while and talked to some other friends about what to do about someone like this. Armed with the screenshots of the chats, we all had reached the same conclusion. They must have taken screenshots of me and God knows how many other people on camera and they must be posted in those private Discord channels for other people to see what I look like. Why? I don't know. I don't really want to know. The images and ideas that came through my head as to why people would be taking screenshots of people's webcams and posting it was, as you can imagine, not great. I left that Discord server. It was clear these are not people I want to be friends with. They were also kicked from any mutual servers that I happened to be in. Of course, this then rattled Furwin. She was not happy about this moment. She messaged me quickly, demanding an explanation as to why several members of the Lalafell group had been kicked from various Discord servers and why, sh why I had left. I put things lightly that I felt uncomfortable after what happened. And there were some friends of mine who knew she talked badly about them and they didn't want her or her group to share our gaming space. Which is true. I want to point that out. It was absolutely true. She went quiet after that. I thought it's resolved, right? Got weird. I left. Told them why. Told the truth. I kept my distance from the group and thought it didn't go too badly, actually. I had this one creepy moment, but we resolved it, right? It's all square. No reason for any comebacks. But I wish that's where it ended. It would have been a nice, neat little storybook of one of those momentous things that happens in online gaming. But of course, it was not to be. A month later, four weeks, friends. I had mostly forgotten about everything that happened. I'd moved on. I was doing other things. I was chilling outside in my guild with Ingridania, as we usually do. Then Furwin and the entire Lalafell squad arrived. Most of my free company knew of the situation at this point, and everyone had the same opinion about her, especially as some new information from other people had come out following the incident. Despite that, her and her entourage did something I had thought Monkey Man might have exaggerated about. Right in front of my eyes, she and this whole little squad of potato people started spreading rumors to anyone who was there, whispering them, saying it in slash say. Apparently, here's one of the rumors. I am in a Final Fantasy specific Discord server where I get off on watching people piss on camera. <laughs> Does that exist, though? <laughs> I mean, that's very niche. I really want to see people pissing, but only if they're Final Fantasy players, right? Because if they're a WoW player, I don't want to see it. If they're playing Aeon, I don't want to see it. If they're playing New World, I don't want to see it. If they're playing Lost Ark, I don't want to see it. I just want to see Final Fantasy players, okay? It's very important to me, all right? I just need to know. <clears throat> Furwin went into detail about these servers, but also how I'm not worth anyone's time and will just start the worst drama. And from the screenshots I got, it seemed like she was detailing more about herself than me. Is she projecting? Is she a piss watcher? Piss watcher? <laughs> Is she a piss watcher? <laughs> piss watcher. She's a projecting piss watcher. <laughs> Don't be a piss watcher, okay? Furwin and her groupies followed me around for weeks. Doing the same thing that happened to Monkey Man. Detailing piss adventures, which I have no idea where it came from. To anyone who stood as so much as near me. Until eventually they got bored and did something else. The secret, this secret society level server where pee camming happens is now a legendary inside joke within my guild. I still talk to Monkey Man occasionally and, gave, and they give me updates with the latest happenings from the group. 
Apparently she lost it when she realized I got screenshots of her messages. Then everyone found out how much shit she is. And within the months after the events with me, everyone left her behind. The scrolls say she sits alone on a limsa bench, waiting for the next sprout to be her victim, and perhaps watch them piss on camera. <laughs> Why go straight to piss watching? <laughs> like immediately from zero to piss watching. It just seems like such a immediate direction to go in to accuse somebody of doing it. Right? It just it just seems so direct. Zero to piss watching. No pause. Do not pass go. Do not collect toilet paper. Go straight to piss watching. Well, I mean, whatever floats your nickels. It's all fine. It's all fine. <clears throat> On a webcam. That's hard to set up. You're going to need a laptop. You can use a phone, actually. Modern day technology. The dream. Well, there you go. Uh, don't do any research on that. I'm just asking you guys, alright? There's no need to research that. It's fine. It's fine. I don't need to see that in the YouTube comments. That's all I'm saying. Found it. <laughs> Found it. There it is. Found it. Actually, didn't take that long. I just had to search it. Yeah, I don't need to see that link in the Twitch co in the YouTube comments. I don't need to see that at all. No thanks. Okay. As fine as it is. Uh, okay, I like the title here. The DKP Buying Tycoon. Alright, I want to see this. Please tell me this guy is just literally buying DKP and it looks outrageous on the website. Oh, please tell me it's that. Oh, oh, I need it. I need it in my life. I need someone who's that stupid. A piss stream when? Uh, hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. you got to be subscribed to the website. Or a Twitch subscriber. No problem. Breacher! I've been watching Drama Time for a while now, but never really decided to send in this story because the people that it is about are still my friends of mine to this day. However, we have talked about it. Oh, God, what is this about? They've had to have a discussion. We have talked about it. We are a few years older, and now we can see the funny side. This might get dark. Does this get dark, Bex? <laughs> Does this get really dark? I'm a little concerned that it may get dark. <laughs> okay, let's let's strap in. Strap in, team. The story takes place in the good old days of Warlords of Draenor. I return to the game to try and enjoy World of Warcraft after leaving the Cataclysm. I quit, not because I disliked the Cataclysm, but because I was a poor. Oh. I was a poor and a teenager. And since my parents were tired of paying my subscription, they eventually opened my door to my bedroom and said, get a fucking job. Yeah, I had that conversation. I was 15 when I had that conversation. No, 16. 16th birthday. Happy 16th birthday, son. You now have to start paying rent. Oh. <laughs> I couldn't be bothered to get a job, though. <laughs> so I just quit WoW instead. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> nah. <laughs> but after years go by, I came across the game again in one of those YouTube commercials for Walls of Draenor and decided, okay, I'm coming back. As a failure of a human being, I decided to make a human warlock. I mean, true, though. <laughs> true. Mainly because my friend told me they're overpowered. And since, I admit, I am a flavor of the month slave, so I just believed him. I feel offended. Dude, nobody's playing a human warlock, right? For really? <laughs> You're not playing a human warlock. <laughs> Play a human warlock, I'd rather have a job. Human warlock is a fail. Oh, for real. I joined the guild. My friend was in, in preparation for Wall of Draenor a few weeks before it launched. They were a heroic progression guild in Mr. Pandaria and never managed to clear anything in Mythic. But they wanted to push! Become better for no reason in Wall of Draenor. Long story short, we leveled up, did the dungeons, had a great time clearing Mythic Highmall, which we did. Oh, fair enough. There was honestly no issues at all, all the way up to Imperator, and that eventually died too. 
I was amazed, shocked, and surprised. I'm very happy with the guild. That's a good situation to be in. It actually works. Fair enough. That was, of course, Mike, until the launch of Black Rock Foundry. Really? BRF was way better than Highmore. Are you trolling? Okay. We had a roster of about 20 to 30 people at the time. Enter a couple of key members of the guild then, shall we? Let's introduce you to Sean, our guild master. And his main officer, who was also his girlfriend. There it is. There it is. <sighs> Boomkin Burger. Sean was raid leading while Boomkin Burger was in charge of loot. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. So far, the system we were using was priority-based master looter. Of course, this was to ensure that everybody in the group could be as strong as a unit rather than the individual. But for some reason, in Blackrock Foundry, Boonkinberger made a post on the Discord. Our current loot system, friends, it's unfair. It is unfair to our new trial members. Look upon these paws. Gaze at their heresy. And understand that they need the salvation in the form of loot. Considering that you cannot all join into the raid. I proclaim a new system. That I have devised with my wisdom. Raid attendance points. Brava. Brava. Which obviously us old schoolers heard as, you mean DKP. <laughs> Bra Dude, I am, I am guilty of this as well. I used to have an add-on that messaged the guild immediately after he had killed a boss. And if players didn't reply within 30 seconds who weren't in the raid, they didn't get points for being there. And I honestly at the time thought this is so sweet. Because I had a macro. <laughs> <laughs> and a macro. So as soon as the boss died, I pressed my little macro and everyone would reply, me, 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 and they would all get their points. But if somebody had gone for a piss, even though they'd sat there all night, they'd literally sat there all night but needed to go for a piss, who weren't even in the raid, they wouldn't get their points. And I was really strict about it because I couldn't be asked fucking about with the list. <sighs> Eventually, I just scrapped it and just I'll just sort loot out. It's fine. <laughs> the idea, though, was simple. Let us open the manifesto of the raid attendance points, my friends. You will get X amount of points for, of course, attending the raid. Most officers agreed, and for me, it was not a big deal, so I did not see any red flags. As somebody who always gets invited to the raid, I don't need to worry about it. Remember, the golden rule of human beings, as long as I'm okay, everybody must be okay. Because that's how it works, right? However, soon things started to get a little curious. A new DKP rule was introduced. Because it wasn't, you know, it's early days. We've got to flesh out the system. Really get it on balance. Things started to get a little curious. A new rule was introduced to allow casual players who weren't part of our raid team to also be able to get mythic loot that was still needed for progression on the raid team. We would allow them to buy DKP by giving gold to the guild bank. And then they would come in to be carried when they had enough DKP to buy an item. Oh, this is genius. Oh, this is genius. I fucking love this. Oh, this is amazing. This is so good. Even during progression, eh? <laughs> this is amazing. Hmm. Sign me up. <clears throat> Now, obviously, you can imagine, upon announcement of this rule, the raid team was not happy, friends. They voiced their disgust. So a meeting was called. In the Discord, Sean, our guild master, and Boomkin Burger, his girlfriend, said, Listen, friends. This provides us with a ton of benefits. If we allow the casuals to give us gold and give them the odd piece of mythic loot when they earn enough, we will no longer need to buy our own potions, buy our own food, or buy our own flasks. 
Everything we want to enjoy the game will be provided for free by the guild. And who cares if we lose a pair of braces? Takes us a couple of extra weeks to down a boss. We have a free ride the whole way. Here enters Connor. Connor was a demo warlock who had never in his entire WoW career, which I believe began in vanilla, touched a fucking raid in his life. Connor was what is most commonly referred to as a goblin. He was extremely good at making gold. Connor only played World of Warcraft as if the only thing that existed was the auction house. The very next raid after this new rule was announced, who do I see? Connor. Connor had never raided. Connor was not in for bosses we had already killed. Connor wanted loot from a boss we hadn't killed. So Connor is in our raid for Mythic Beast Lord Progress. <laughs> genius <laughs> this is fucking genius <laughs> connor did not perform well <laughs> now oh jesus christ i've just read the wrong i've just read the next line all right so connor uh for those of you who didn't do mythic beast lord if you don't know what's going on you're gonna die real fucking quick you're gonna get a spear through your head and just be a useless pile of shit um connor obviously did not do well because that was his first raid encounter he'd ever dealt with what do you think Guildmaster sean's decision was play some guesses our live audience our wonderful bros over here in the chat what did connor suggest as the solution to this training time just do more dps just die that would be a classic is just have him die so he doesn't bait spears in weird places just have him suicide promote him you're all wrong, by the way. <laughs> You're all wrong, by the way. The raid team was unhappy. After the raid, Guildmaster Sean sent me a message in the pink. Asking me to come back onto comms. I could not believe the conversation I was about to have. Sean told me that Connor had given the guild a lot of gold. And it was now my responsibility to go through the logs to find out what he did wrong. This is now my problem. Let me tell you what he did wrong. He hasn't got a fucking clue what's going on. And he doesn't know how to deal with those problems even if he knew what was going on. You get it? <laughs> now, I was angry. Obviously. But, I did like the guild. And we had done really well in High Mall. And I'll be honest with you, Mike. The idea of having completely free consumables for the rest of our days. Sounded good. So I sat down. And went through Connor's logs. I discovered something that may make the warlocks in your chat cringe. Connor was a demonology warlock. But somebody had told him that for Beast Lord, in order to be helpful to the team, he should play Destruction. Connor didn't seem to know about Chaos Bolt. He hadn't cast Chaos Bolt all night. <laughs> what I found is that Connor just pressed Incinerate. He just pressed Incinerate for seemingly days on end. I went back to Sean. Sean, Guildmaster, love of my life, I have discovered the issue. He doesn't know what the fuck is happening or how to play the game. Sean's response surprised me a little bit. He said, thank you for the help. I'll take it up with Connor 
because he still paid for the loot from Beast Lord, so he still needs to come along. I thought, okay, maybe next time, Connor, our casual demonology slash destruction warlock, will do a little better, maybe contribute, or maybe we'll just let him die and see if we can 19 man it. To my surprise, I watched Connor get promoted to core raid member. An announcement then appeared in the green. Congratulations, Connor. You have been promoted to the raid team for excellent contribution to the guild. I'm not going to lie, guys. This surprised me, considering the information that I had found on Connor, such as he had no idea how to play the game. I whispered Sean. I'm confused by this decision, Sean. We've got ourselves a Warlock player who uses one of his 12 spells and you've made him one of the core raid members of the team for Mythic Progress. Just a little confused. That's all. He told me that I had my mental wiring crossed. And that this guild this guild right now, this guild that had cleared Highmall Mythic, that had gone for a heroic progress guild to a mythic progress guild, had modernized. And that performance of individuals is not the most important thing to building a successful guild. And individual performance isn't what we should be thinking in terms of guild values. Okay? Get with the times. Get with the times. Our focus as a guild and what bred our success, and will continue to breed our success, is family and friendship. And that Connor had provided us with more gold to buy BOEs than we could ever repay. Me, maybe ignorantly, trusting Sean, who had always led us to, to victory. He had. Sean had led us to victory. I trusted in what he said. This probably, if Sean believes this is better for the guild, then it probably is going to be better for the guild. The only problem is that since Connor was now officially made a core member of the guild, when I whispered him to see if he would like some help, he told me no because he's on the same level as I am within the guild. He then referred to me as the Chaos Bolt Nazi as Sean had told him about what I had found in his logs. He then called me an ember Nazi for telling him that his embers were a resource that he should spend. <clears throat> After this conversation where he called me a Nazi twice, he then went to complain at Boomkin Burger. I then got asked to come on TeamSpeak a day or so later. I was then told... That she had heard about, she had heard from a Tweety Bird that I had been complaining and harassing guildmates about performance instead of focusing on family and friendship within the guild. <laughs> I answered, of course. Do you mean Connor? <laughs> she answered, she doesn't name people because that could increase levels of toxicity and increase harassment against the individual. Who had made the whistleblower report. <laughs> whistleblower. Oh my fucking god. With the essentially confirming. Yeah of course it's Connor. What the fuck. I just said that I found out it's weird. That he doesn't even play his character. I just. <laughs> Her answer was that the guild was going to no longer check the performance of individuals. Especially those. Who've allowed the guild to progress so much quicker. Despite not having killed any new bosses. Because of the large amounts of gold that they had contributed to enable the raid team to keep going. 
I replied, gold doesn't kill bosses. And how are we supposed to kill bosses if everyone is performing like shit? She had an answer for me. If it gets to the point where our guild is no longer capable of killing bosses on their own, we will have enough gold so we could just buy a carry for everyone from a proper mythic guild. Now, I don't want to say that's just not a genius play. But, I mean, it's really quite up there as a genius play. <laughs> it's really quite up there. When you think about it. When you think about it. Why progress yourself when you could just have people give you gold so you could buy progress? Now, I spot a flaw in this plan. And I'm not making any of this story up, by the way. Word for word. Let me just copy-paste so you can see. I'm not typing nothing. That was the, that was the response he got. Um, they're not going to be able to provide the rewards for these guys. Because they're no longer able to kill any bosses. So these guys who are giving all this gold in order to get progress and loot are not going to be able to get any loot anymore. So... <laughs> What's going to happen then? Because like most investors, if you don't give them their return, they tend to want everything back and with interest. Let's go. Let's see where this goes. I went to sleep that night, deciding I would, of course, quit the guild. As I'm sure your chat has pointed out. The next day I logged in, I found out I had been demoted. <laughs> I had been... <laughs> 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 I found out I had been demoted from the raid team because of the new social reputation system that was in place. Excellent. I would love to see the social reputation score of any member of Bald, Fat, and Ugly. It would be low. <laughs> it would be low. <laughs> <laughs> Loz, you know, is the first person to ever reach negative social reputation. Like, genuinely speaking. <laughs> Loz is the only person to reach negative. Clog would probably be okay. <laughs> but I think Loz is in negative. So is Mickle. Anders down there. <laughs> They're all at the bad. Degenerate scum. Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, buffer underflow arrow would wrap it around to max. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When this new system was implemented, and of course my demotion, it led to a full riot in the raid team. Since most people fucking hated Connor and did not want him in the raid and didn't even give a shit about having their own materials. People kept banging on that they get all their consumables for free because of Warlords of Draenor garrisons. That's true! You don't even pay for shit in Warlords of Draenor! It falls from the fucking sky in Warlords of Draenor! Oh, it was pretty good. Oh, I'm not going to lie. That was pretty good. Uh, got your coffee and your mining pick. Woof. Five minutes. You've got bags full of shit. Oh, it was good that. I farmed those mining picks and coffees on every single character. I had them all, man. <laughs> and them, them herbing gloves you can get. Sick. <clears throat> I decided, of course, to leave the guild instantly after this. A few weeks later, I learned the real reason why I got removed from the core team. Connor had paid for me to be removed. <gasps> Apparently they had offered Connor to buy my raid spot. For one of Connor's warlock friends. Swag. Dude, you've got to admit though, that's a baller play. Motherfucker just bought your raid spot flat out cash. That's pretty baller actually. How much gold did Connor have? I'm kind of jelly. Later, my friend who was still in the guild left to join my new guild. But not before taking all the gold from the guild bank that was donated by Connor. They kept it in the guild bank. You dumb fucks. You absolute fucking clowns. Jesus Christ. Who in their right mind actually puts the guild gold in the guild bank? Are you fucking crazy? Are you actually nuts? Who does that? 
If you've never had to deal with Alex 1, Alex 7, Alex 12, Alex 16 to get, to get gold, you haven't got a fucking clue. <laughs> you haven't got a fucking clue. No way did you actually put... I bet they had to, right? To show how wealth... Otherwise, the system wouldn't work. They'd have to show the cash. They'd have to show that there's gold going in that they're spending on all these BOEs. They would have to demonstrate that the gold exists. Strangely enough, I never heard anything from it. I do know that shortly after, Sean and Boomkinberger disbanded the guild. Because all of the raiders were fed up. I hope you enjoyed my little tale, Mike. We did, but that was painful. Oh my god. Connor is a baller. I would love to know, if you're listening, Arthur, I want to know how much gold is involved, if anybody can find out. I would really, really like to know exactly how much gold was involved. How much does a guild bank hold? Because they must have been getting private donations, right? They had to have been getting private donations. They must have been. 10 mil? I have no idea. It's more than that, right? Because a player can hold a lot. Well, that's what I was thinking. Were they generally... Because some people consider like 5 million a lot of gold, right? And if you feel that way, that's fine. But just know that is not a lot of gold in WoW. Certainly these days. That's not a lot. It will be for some... That's what I'm thinking. Were they a guild where like having a couple of million was a really big deal? Because, I mean, it's not. In, in guild terms, it's not. All right, let's see. Kane. Uh, no. Zaphius. Kane. For a mythic guild, that's one boost run or something like that. Or less. Actually, ideally, not, not enough. Uther? Eric? Oh, God, we got lots of names here. Okay. Fat Kid? Yeah. Fat Kid. This guy. Oxlane. Oh my god, Oxlane is still one of our supporters. That's awesome. And Alexander. Perfect. Excellent. Say. Okay. Okay. So we've got a guild master, two, three officers, one of them young, a husband, a wife. Oh god. A death knight and a resto shaman. All right. Uh the fall of meme. Breach your chat. It's his Oh no. <laughs> oh, and it's you again. <laughs> it's his eye once again the great survival hunter dude give it up bro right the raided io chasing ahead of the curve keystone master a clout wanting off spec meta playing slash y macroing idiot i am not a meme <laughs> you are a meme let it die. Even if you do get where you want to go, you'll never beat the world's number one survival hunter, Fingal. Remember, he's held that number one spot. He knows it. He's number one global. <sighs> I will just sum up to all that, yes, I did get the rank one for a total of two weeks because then an MM hunter from a Hall of Fame guild decided to play hunter for survival for a meme and smash plus 20s. <laughs> That's what's going to happen, bro. <laughs> you understand? Some idiot like Noggy is just going to be like, I'm going to play survival this week and just crush everything. Or fucking Mirez or whatever. It's just going to be like, oh, I'll play survival for the memes. <clears throat> oh, well, at least I did achieve it at some point. At least I was able to get what I was going for originally. True, you did meet your goal. That's fine. That's fine. If you remember, though, we had the whole guild merger ordeal. Where we were poached by the people who joined our guild. The guild who apparently are career guild breakers who like to get their new recruits from infiltrating guilds and starting a fire, making their original guild look like a water-filled paradise with sunshine and margaritas and flame-retardant bedsheets. Surely their original guild is the best place to be and surely they won't fall apart again and make some other unsuspecting guild fall apart so they can complete the cycle anew. They surely won't be hard stuck at 3 out of 10 heroic in 9.1. And they surely won't spam their recruit macro in trade chat immediately after we post ours. Seriously. They would post that macro as if they had something set up to detect our message. But I digress. After the whole situation, we had went, we went back to Mythic Raiding. Uh, we had went back into Mythic Raiding after rebuilding our team. But things weren't the same. Farming heroic became our weekly routine. 
And since the tier had been going on forever, we turned to recruiting for 9.1 instead. During all of this, I got sick of the survival dream. Did you give up on the dream? I had been feeling the itch. The itch that I think most people feel at some point in their WoW career. The itch to be a rogue. <laughs> I, I had it. <laughs> I made a, my rogue in vanilla. And there it was. My old main. I dropped down to the character selection screen. Looked at his low level. And got to work. I leveled him up and got him kind of geared. And prepared for him to be my new main in 9.1. When it arrived, we had a team of around 12 people or so. And so the first week of ra raiding went fine. We cleared up to Fate Scribe normal and we're chilling. Nice fun raid with friends. But a lot of people on our voice comms were mentioning that they were done with WoW and it was time to quit. They didn't like the expansion anymore. They hated the new shard system. They hated they had to grind Soul Ash. I'm sure you I don't need to tell you about it. No, you don't. They eventually uh, turned into us having talks with a group of old friends. Eric and Fat Kid. They were a husband and wife who had ran keys and occasionally raided with us last year. But now they were running their own guild. They were also having attendance issues. So my guild leader, Zaphius, decided, why don't we try a co-raid? Just see how things go. Right? We'll raid together. Of course, we're not going to merge, because we'd had bad experiences with that in the past. We should have known, of course, this would have been a shit idea, but let's go for it anyway. Let me just give you the rundown of my guild. Me and my 12-ish friends. Zephyrus was our long-standing guild master. Brewmaster tank and a damn fine player. He has top 10 heroic passes and brewmaster. And on top of that, he is a clicker. I don't know how he does it, but he's okay. One officer was Degaron, a resto druid slash IRL neuroscientist. Super nice with a deep want from progress. Another officer is Kane, our warlock. The guy who runs the guild bank and is generally such a chill dude. And then there's Uther, a young, baby-faced, 18-year-old officer who, of course, plays an unholy DK with a prop warrior alt. I'm also going to mention Oxlane, another unholy DK, and Alexander, our resto shaman. These were all just people that I know and was safe with and comfortable with. So, off we go to the co-raid. Things go well. There are about two of them for each of us, about seven or eight of us and 15 of them, something like that. Zephyrus' main tank with Eric as off tank. Things go well the first week. We cleared normal mode. Then we were starting heroic progress. We cleared up to Painsmith first heroic week and we're having a good time. Had some trouble with Soul Render and Painsmith, but we were happy about how it went. I would like to mention that Zephyrus raid led the entire thing. Our G GM, our boy, and Eric, our fat and fat kid, never said a word. They were just along for the ride, but doing their jobs. Week two. We spent like two hours on Painsmith. We had one of our DKs pulling less damage than the tank, so we benched him. The DK understood. He wasn't pulling his weight, but he wasn't an ass about it. No worries. But the problem is, like, four of their guys were also below Zephyrus, the tank. Kindly, politely, Zephyrus mentioned that maybe we should sit them for this fight. We've been here two hours... Just so we can kill it and move on with our days? No. I want to make it clear right now. We're casual. We do not take this game serious. It's just a game. <sighs> Zephyrus let it slide. We didn't want problems. We're doing stuff. But of course, this is where the boulder started to roll. Next week, same thing. Painsmith problems. And we recommended maybe we should think about sitting people, okay? Please. No. So we just sit there and grind our faces into the ground for another hour. We finally did kill him, I want to say. And we moved on to Guardian. And this is where it really hit the fan. Really? A Guardian? <laughs> no way. <laughs> On our second or third pull of the night, Fat Kid gets one shot by the laser mechanic and instantly calls a wipe. Now we're maybe 30 seconds into the fight and she's the only one to die. She's screaming that it's a wipe. Our officer, Degron, says, no, 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 guys, guys, don't wipe, don't wipe, don't wipe. Please, don't call wipes when you're the only one who died. We have a res, it's fine. 
We go on to kill the boss on that very same pull. After the raid finished, there's a meeting. A serious meeting. Between both guilds. Fat Kid, of course, takes the lead in this conversation. We are extremely upset. We are not happy. We are saddened that Degaron spoke during raid. Because she's not the raid leader. And in our guild, it is not allowed to have people speaking on voice who are not the raid leader. Or the leaders of the other guild. The only people who should be talking in raids are Zephyrus, who's leading the raid, Eric, and myself. It's very important that everybody's able to listen to calls. Now, I told you earlier, Zephyrus was literally the only one who was speaking. Apparently, they believed that Eric and Fat Kid could talk, but they never said a fucking thing. I think I maybe heard check your oils at some point, but that's about it. Now, the whole situation gets blown out of proportion. They make an announcement next raid that it is imperative that if this co-raid is to work, only these three people can speak while raiding. We all roll our eyes, of course, and brush it off and be like, okay. <laughs> I test the waters by saying some things during the raid. I mean, just test the things like, anybody have a good weekend, mate? Did anybody know FF is free? Anybody get any shards? Just to see what would happen, right? Just to see what would happen. <clears throat> we get to Painsmith. No one says anything. Besides reiterating that only the raid leader should be making calls. Okay. The same thing, of course, happens as before. People aren't pulling their weight. Some are standing in the middle with chains, all that fun stuff. Zaphius takes the raid leadership role, though. The power is in his hands, as, of course, they have decreed. He sits our troublemakers. Eric puts his foot down and says he cannot sit members of his team. A fight begins. Ultimately, the fight comes to an end when Zaphius declares... Fine! You be the raid leader then. If I'm not allowed to lead the raid and make the calls, you do it. And then never speaks. We spend the rest of the night with Eric raid leading. Which is him being literally silent on comms. We raid in complete fucking silence. Now, somehow, the boss dies eventually due to pure repetition and the gods fucking smiling on us. Eventually, it fucking dies. What should be a one to three pull boss takes us now, after three kills, 20 plus pulls. After Zaphius leaves their Discord and they go crazy with banning a bunch of our members, except for me and Uther, one of our officers. I don't know why I was left alone, but figured since Uther hadn't been online much or raid with us because his new job was during our raid nights, they hadn't noticed him. So, of course, there's no more co-raid. Shock, horror, everyone's fucking surprised. They drag our name through the mud because Zaphius is toxic and elitist. Yada, yada. You get the point and you can probably predict it. But then, they start telling our members and recruits that we are toxic. And as soon as they notice somebody else join our guild, they poach them extremely quickly, explaining this history that they had with us. We had other people join the guild and leave within an hour. Leaving with these messages, I heard you guys are toxic and elitist and not what you were advertised. We move on and go back to our own guild raids, of course. And after all this, Degaron decides she wants to move on to a mythic progression guild. I can't blame her, of course. She's a damn good player. How could I begrudge her wanting more than the heroic we're offering her? We wish her a good farewell and good luck. She leaves on great terms. Nobody's mad about it. She did a large chunk of our recruiting and raid organizing. She researched all the comps, all the strats. She did all that stuff that we rely on so we don't have to be fucked. Zaphius decides he wants to reorganize the structure of our guild. He needs to make some changes. Now there's opening spots. Now that we raid on our own, we see what issues we have. 
Some people are raid loggers, don't run keys. Some people don't know their class. Some expect to be carried by the members who actually give a shit because they've been in the guild for so long. They usually do expect from a dying guild. What JG makes is a demoting of Uther from his officer position. To be fair, Uther hadn't been to a raid in over a month. He hadn't bothered recruiting anybody. He hadn't done anything an officer might do. And he wasn't exactly taking care of his character. Not his fault. Man's got a brand new job. 12 hour shifts. 12 hour shifts. That go into the evening. And he couldn't be online to do these things. Zephyrus wanted an officer who could be online and do officer things. Uther took this very personally. And G quit immediately. So it's not because he got demoted. But that's what most people think. He said it was because he wasn't allowed to main prop warrior. Although he hadn't played the game in a month. <laughs> That's why you kicked me. Because you wouldn't let me tank. Isn't it? It's not because I don't log in. It's because you won't let me play a warrior. Obviously he's making excuses from being demoted from being officer. Uther then fucking joins Eric and Fat Kids Guild. Instantly, he's promoted to an officer there. I find this out because I saw his rank in their Discord literally an hour after he had left us. It was a kick in the teeth. We had done everything correctly, played ball nicely. It turns Zaphius makes me an officer. So that's cool. I can help out a little bit more and I feel like I've got a little bit more authority to make some decisions. I help out with recruitment, the race tracks, the comp, all that stuff that was now missing. So at this point, our officer team is me, Kane, and another guy who plays casually, but he does his bit outside of Raid. Didn't mention his name because he was a chill dude. At this point, we're still dealing with recruits leaving because somebody told them that we're toxic elitist pricks and dealing with people trying to get gear outside of the Raid it infuriates Zaphius. We're trying fucking so hard to stoke this fire, to keep this guild alive. And every step forward is just removed from us immediately. It doesn't help that our guild has now become hard stuck in progress as well. Heroic Kel'Thuzad simply will not die. One day I log on. Kane is now the guildmaster. Apparently the boiling point had been reached. Zaphius got sick of the stress. It was causing him IRL. And gave guildmaster to Kane and told him to take the reins. He said he was still going to tank, he was still going to raid lead, but he doesn't want to be in charge of the guild anymore. Well, Kane, I love the guy, but he didn't want to be raid leader, he didn't want to be guild master, and he wasn't prepared for it. Zaphius told him he needed to start recruiting if he wanted to bring the guild back to its former glory. During the raid, though, it essentially came down to me to get other people. To get pugs if needed, make decisions, and help Zaphius raid lead. During the raid, Kane didn't say a goddamn word. Our brand new glorious guildmaster never spoke a single time. I had apparently been told, I had been told that I was the HR of the guild. For some goddamn reason, everybody who had some sort of personal problem, IRL or otherwise, was now coming to me. And I was spending all my days dealing with that. It was so tedious. Things like Oxlane didn't like the way someone talked or somebody used profanity too much. If someone was complaining about our progression that they'd seen in general chat, someone complained or said this or that in a dungeon group or if we had to recruit to interview, it all came to me. Within a week, due to Kane's not being there, I had become the de facto interim guild leader. And I didn't want that at all. But then comes the day. A couple of weeks into this fucking nightmare. We're still struggling on Kalthazad again. We have pugged a couple of deeps and we're grinding our faces on KT's floor, making sure it is fully inspected. <laughs> we had a rep pally who was dying before the first phylactery phase every single time. I, we didn't even know how, but he did. So of course I tell him, dude, one more chance. If you keep dying, we have to sit you. He understood. Died the next pull. So of course I sit him. And of course he says, so you guys are as toxic as I'd heard. <sighs> we let the frustration pass on the comment. But it does turn us into having more pulls than the boss. We're doing better because people aren't just dying. But still no kill though. 
we ended up bringing him the rep pally back half an hour later on because other people had to leave <laughs> no way <laughs> oh that's really sad please can you come back <laughs> please please we still didn't get the kill everybody in that rating went to bed angry that night i want to i went to bed actually stressed out shaky frustrated i had been stressed out the entire time i'd been promoted to officer and it only been two or three weeks and i fucking hated it i could see it on the wall and i watched as my guild turned into a pile of shit that was just sliding down the wall our reputation was dog shit and of course it didn't help that Blizzard was ruining their own stonks with people quitting left and right, and the only people being left not being the best. Our server in America was turning into a ghost town, and we were in the midst of it. So I sent a message to Kane and Zaphius. Guys, here's the deal. Either we look to merge or join another guild as a whole, or I'm fucking done. We could serve a transfer, we could start over, I don't care. I just don't want to be on the shit realm with this shit reputation, with these shitty recruits anymore. The very next day, our golden boy, who never raised a word against anybody, our Resto Shaman Alexander, cracked. We joined into a Discord tirade about how our guild fucking sucks. Its leadership sucks, and that we suck at recruiting. Zaphius is fucking shit at the game anyway. He's the tank trying to do damage. Although Zaphius had been a fine tank. <laughs> and had been pugging Heroic Sylvanas every week during our progress. Yes, our team was that bad. How Kane is the new GM is fucking horrible because he doesn't do shit. He's licking his own nipples <laughs> half the time. He shouldn't be sitting people in raid because my... I shouldn't be sitting people in raid because I'm not a 90% plus passer. And I have no room to judge people. And then he G quits right on the spot. This, I hope there's a payoff to this. This is this is so depressing. At this point, we realized it's over. It's done. It's done. Okay. The ceiling has collapsed. There's no floor left. We either let another guild develop us. We go our separate ways. But we do something because this is fucking over. Perhaps a shining light, though. Uther asks if he can come back to the guild. Because he hates Eric. He hates Fat Kid. He hates their guild. He hates how casual they are. They're too friendly to shitters. They don't even play right. And they've been doing Heroic Fate Scribe for a fucking month now and he can't stand it. Dude, we tell him. There's no personal hate here, but our guild is fucking dead. Dead, dude. He says he doesn't care. He comes back and hangs with us in Discord. One day he decides it'd be really funny to call Zephyrus a cook. <laughs> After they got into a fight in which Zaphius told Uther to go fuck a toilet paper roll for whatever reason. When Oxlane, another silent partner, just pipes up and you never heard Oxlane talk. This is why you guys can't recruit. And then he quit. It became a running joke. Anytime anyone told a joke or gave each other a bit of shit, they would just go, This is why we can't recruit. I'm telling you. <laughs> This is why I can't recruit. It's because you fucking shit. <laughs> what did we do? We sat there. Because this is why we can't recruit. I decided, fuck it, man. Fuck it. I was so done. I was turning as bald as you, Mike. And I just fucking left. I just left. I joined a guild, an old guild of mine. That was just clearing heroic every week. And we're sitting at 3 out of 10 Mythic. Which is where this guild called it a day on Shadowlands. Oh my god, this is so depressing. And I've quit raiding until next tier. <laughs> like, 3 out of 10? You quit in 3 out of 10? Taking our advice, Zaphius and Kane transferred to a big server, Illidan. They have rocked up to 5 out of 10. And some guild over there. Uther joined another guild on our server as 4 out of 10 as of writing this. But for myself, I have to admit to you all, I think the stress of being an officer de facto GM stressed me out so much 
which I quit enjoying WoW or quit enjoying the rogue class at least. <laughs> it was nothing to do with being a rogue dude. Since then, I haven't really played WoW for the last month or so, except to go in, kill Sylvanas with my boys. If you know me, you know I want a challenge, but I just don't have the passion. I started leveling a Shadow Priest on Illidan. Maybe I could join back in with my squad, Zaphius and Kane next year. Maybe I'll stay on my rogue. I don't know. Maybe I'm full of copium to the max. Or maybe the survival hunter calls once more. Oh, no, dude, don't do that. You st <laughs> no. no, that's a bad call. It's not. <laughs> maybe, I'm no, don't go back to that. Maybe that shining diamond of a survival hunter will come back again. If only it's for the memes. At least I had fun while I was doing that. Only time will tell. Did I go wrong anywhere here? Do you have any advice for a soul like myself? Is WoW even worth it anymore? I don't know what to do with myself, but for now you'll find me with my IRL cat, Mr. Fitzy, while I go for level 60 on my hardcore character, my hardcore tune, Rogue Again, and WoW Classic Season of Mastery. Thanks for reading. But I have to tell you, Preacher, this is the fall of the meme. Oh, that was very depressing. <laughs> It's <laughs> super depressing. I always liked your stories. As useless and stupid as they were, <laughs> I did like your stories. Uh, I'm not going to tell anybody not to play WoW. Well, because I think you can make your own decisions. You're grown-ups. Uh, but it's also good to take a break. Because there's nothing wrong with that at all. It's also nice to take a break and let the dust settle. And then see how you feel when you're away. And see if you actually want to go back or try something new. I'm never going to tell anybody not to play. Because if you're enjoying World of Warcraft, good on you. I'm somewhat envious of you. Uh, as for me, I am more than happy not playing World of Warcraft. Um, I have personally not logged in now for about a month and a half. And I'm fine. I'm fine. I've got plenty of other things. I've got plenty of Pokemon to catch. And uh, plenty of extremes to do in Final Fantasy. Which is what I'm going to be doing. But take a break. If you want, take a break. Don't, let this, don't get stressed out playing video games, man. Otherwise, you'll end up like me. Fucking freaking out because... You can't find Abra. <clears throat> Fucking prick. <sighs> but then you catch him. But then you catch him. Ladies and gentlemen, that just brings us to the end of drama time for this week. I hope you had a great time. I hope you had such a blast. We did so many things this week. Uh, I need to figure out what to do with these. Any magic fans want to let me know? Magic, uh, the Wizards of the Coast have sent me some cards for the new ones. I haven't opened them. I've set them very precious. Uh, and we also have our Christmas month starting very shortly. Okay. We have our Christmas month. We'll be doing some Minecraft challenges. We'll be playing some Grand Theft Auto 4. We'll be doing our Final Fantasy Extremes next week. And of course, finishing up some Pokemon. We've got a busy, busy time. Uh, Minecraft is starting when Endwalker starts. Because I am not up to Endwalker. And I certainly don't want to be de derailing things by doing Stormblood story. While everybody's enjoying the Endwalker story and things like that. So we'll be doing our challenges then. Should be good. Um, other than that, be good. Be awesome. And I'll see you next week. All right, guys. Bye, everybody. <laughs>